Bitcoin remains at the top of the cryptocurrency world in large part because of the security and stability it's kind of exhibited over the years. But its security model could be in trouble with no clear plan on how to fix it. Let's talk about Bitcoin's security ticking time bomb and why it really matters that it gets solved. Okay, so when we get into this problem, let's describe first the way Bitcoin works. Miners run specialized machines which secure the network, and no one else can just come in and just attack the network and say they control part of the network without also being able to produce this very specific output that these machines are kind of designed to do. The way this works out is miners are paid by the network itself. So you can make a living off of running these mining machines that specifically just process Bitcoin transactions and secure the network. In the beginning, this was entirely inflation, meaning new coins getting created goes to these miners. Every few years, the inflation drops by 50% in a halving and then it just keeps going down and down and down until eventually there's no more inflation. And the idea, the original design of Bitcoin was that fees you pay, transaction fees for you know making payments, are going to contribute to minor profitability. And over time, as the halvings keep going down and the inflation keeps going down, transaction fee revenue starts going up and eventually the two things kind of flip and then you're kind of running on entirely a fee-based system. It's kind of like a company. You have to start making a profit at some point. Think of Bitcoin's inflation like startup capital. It pays the bills until you have enough customers. Every few years it gets cut in half until 2140 when it runs out completely. By then it needs to have enough in fees. Right now about a thousand new Bitcoin is created each day at let's say $30,000 per Bitcoin. That's around 30 million per day. To replace the current budget without inflation at 50 cents per transaction, you'd need 60 million transactions, or about 20 times current capacity. This is why the original design was supposed to scale to meet these needs. But that's not the way Bitcoin works anymore. The original design changed at some point. Originally, Bitcoin was meant to just process more transactions over time. At some point, though, the full throughput, the capacity of the layer one network, just the whole amount of transactions Bitcoin can actually process, got capped at a certain level of one megabytes of transaction data per block. I'm sure you could go down a huge rabbit hole about the block size wars and the debates and all this kind of stuff. But the fact is, rather than continue with the original design, the idea now is to cap that transaction capacity on chain and then just find other ways of dealing with demand like layer two networks, for example. As a result, of course, the per transaction fees have gone up and have to go up in order to feed the network, but they haven't gone up enough. Are fees growing? Well, over a certain period of time, they definitely did. Are they growing on the whole still? Not really, definitely not enough to kind of make a splash. Ordinals, stamps, and other data transaction uses have led to some fee increases, but to date, none of them have been significant enough or shown enough staying power to be counted on for reasonable network revenue in the future. Is this even really a problem though? A lot of people on the internet will tell you, no, this isn't even a problem. Bitcoin's plenty secure. It's just never gonna be a problem. Don't worry about it. But yes, it is a problem. And I know that there's a lot of people hand-waving this away, saying it's not gonna be a problem or it'll be solved eventually. But even some of the most unabashedly pro-Bitcoin experts out there are still saying that this is a problem and will need to be solved. Some might not be super urgent about when it needs to be solved or might be confident that a solution will happen, but it is still an issue. The issue is not how relatively secure the Bitcoin network is. It's how secure it is based on what it is securing. Or more specifically, it's cost to attack compared to market capitalization. So what this means is how much money is being paid to secure how much money. Everything in the system revolves around money, right? The profitability of the miners, the amount of money it takes to attack the network is the amount of money it takes to secure the network. And the economic incentives are towards securing it, supposedly. What's happening is you have the same 
quality lock securing a much, much more valuable safe of valuables over time. It just at some point, it's going to become way too top heavy. And even though it's hard to break that lock, it's going to be worth it to break that lock in order to get what's inside. On April 19th of 2013, Bitcoin's market cap was about 1.18 billion, while miners generated around 463,000 in total revenue that day. 10 years later, the market cap was about 573 billion, while miners generated around 26 million in revenue. We went from a roughly 2,500 to one ratio to over a 22,000 to one ratio. Less and less money is securing more and more money. But the hash rate is going up. Yeah, you hear that a lot, which means that the total amount of, I guess, output of miners is going up over time, despite this kind of issue. The thing is, hash rate is a useless metric. For one, depending on which cryptocurrency you're talking about, the hash rate metrics are just completely different. It's just not even uh, comparable. But even with Bitcoin, as technology improves, as people find better ways to mine efficiently, you get more hashes, more hash power out of the same cost. And so if the security budget of Bitcoin stays the same, the hash rate's still going to keep going up long term as long as there's new people building better mining machines, etc. But that doesn't mean it's getting more secure. It's getting more secure by the standards of today. But by the standards of tomorrow, it's not getting any more secure if there's not more money going into the system. Hash rate is not a zero-sum game. There isn't just like a pot of hash rate out there and then when miners grab it and use it, then the network is secure. No, it's just an output metric of mining machines. And the reason it's going up is because people are finding a way to do it because it makes money. Yes, there's only so many mining machines out there, but mining manufacturing makes machines to sell for money and people who make money mining buy them. If someone wants to buy or acquire, especially cheaply, mining machines, for ulterior motives that's not just securing the Bitcoin network, they can. It's not really that difficult. And no, external solutions aren't going to work out, such as, for example, getting some foundation together where everyone donates and then that subsidizes some mining activity to keep the network secure or just other kinds of things where money comes from elsewhere to do this exact thing. Or miners mine at a loss because they believe the network is you know, worth securing, they find value, all that kind of stuff. The genius of the Bitcoin design originally was that the entire system is self-contained, meaning the system runs itself and you don't have to worry about outside groups and outside interests which might have very specific needs coming in and saying, this is how the network needs to be run. If it's not profitable, however, you either have security going down or you have other interest groups coming in and now they start chipping away at the decentralization and the censorship resistance of the Bitcoin network because they have ulterior motives. Certain Ethereum block producers famously refuse to process sanctioned transactions, but this has happened to Bitcoin as well. If miners are mining for motives other than pure profit, this opens up an easy censorship vector. And the higher the market cap gets relative to miner revenue, the more likely this becomes. Okay, so what can we do about any of this? There's a bunch of potential solutions, and I'm sure I'm going to miss a few, but let's cover the, the four big ones, right? At least the categories. So number one would be force higher fees. So right now the Bitcoin network charges, I don't know, 50 cents, a dollar, a couple dollars to send a Bitcoin transaction. This could be wildly different when you're watching this video, as it turns out. But so far, that's what the market has determined that it's worth to be able to send Bitcoin. That's where the price landed for now. The price has gone significantly up since the early days when I was using it more frequently back in like 2015 or 16. But at some point in the 2017 era, it spiked to astronomical levels. And then again in 2021, it went up a little bit. But the fees on the whole aren't really growing. So you could force higher fees. You could change something in the protocol that makes fees go up or some miners could just reject low transaction fee transactions but there's only so much people will be willing to pay for the same thing and it could really backfire where people just start migrating to other networks if it becomes astronomically expensive which they probably already have also transactions of that size are not really individual transactions and we could be really moving into a 
purely institutional settlement area for Bitcoin, which is not really good. The most transactions the Bitcoin network has ever processed was about 490,000. In order to replace inflation, fees have to be over $60 per transaction. That would completely price out individual users from interacting with the main chain, leaving only institutional settlements or business use cases. Jeff Garzik in 2015 warned that Bitcoin was being hotwired for settlement. If fees go up to this level, it'll appear he was right. Second solution, bigger blocks. Now, calm down, Roger Ver, I'm not talking about big block, Bitcoin, gig, mega megs, gig, whatever, that kind of stuff. Although I do think that on-chain scaling in that way for most cryptocurrency networks is the best way forward. We're talking about Bitcoin the way it is today and how to deal with it based on the set of characteristics that have been imparted kind of by the community and by developers. No, I'm not talking about huge blocks, but why not do something modest like double the block size with every halving so that then it kind of stays the same. Where there's half as much inflation, you can now process twice the transactions, et cetera, et cetera. And then it can gradually kind of go up and just keep on growing, but not in a way that compromises that first principle, which uh, Bitcoin is kind of selected for, which is everyone should be able to run a node. Just kind of keeping up with Moore's law, where storage costs, equipment, et cetera, et cetera, is all getting more cheap and efficient over time. Just keep up with that. And with these modest block size growths, then you can probably solve that problem. The third solution, which is probably the most practical for the set of considerations that have been put forth for Bitcoin is a tail emission, which means a very small but permanent inflation, where right now it's not really that much of a problem that fees aren't that high because there's, there's still enough inflation out there to pay for everything. That's going away someday, but if you make it never go away, then you have a permanently, at least to a certain extent, secure network. Monero is one of the more known examples of a tail emission, where a flat 0.6 Monero is minted every block or around two minutes, forever. This doesn't dilute the supply too much as it's under 1% inflation, but make sure there's a constant security budget of at least a certain amount, no matter what happens with fees. Now the problem with that is one of the biggest reasons people love Bitcoin is that only ever 21 million. And of course, scarcity is a huge element to this, Having a tail emission won't really harm scarcity that much in the long term, but it does harm that mythos of hardest money on the planet, only 21 million, et cetera, et cetera. And changing that, while it would be the simplest, most low impact way of ensuring the current system kind of limps along forever, I just can't really see it ever happening. The price damage that that would do because of the reputational damage to Bitcoin would just, I don't think you could recover from that. And finally, number four, a kind of interesting... A um, new entrant to this thing is layer two security. Now, layer twos, like say the Lightning Network, are built on top of Bitcoin to kind of take a lot of the transaction volume, et cetera, away so you can scale more easily. The problem is they don't really contribute to the first layer security, unless you're talking about in fees. But again, if fees aren't going up, again, see number one. In order to have that actually work, you'd have to force higher fees. There are some kind of clever ideas of how to do this though. For example, Rootstock is a layer two for Bitcoin for smart contracts and stuff like that. And the way it works is it's merge mined, meaning the same mining that generates Bitcoin also generates Rootstock. So if people mine RSK, they mine Bitcoin and vice versa. And so at some point, if you get a ton of transaction volume and profitability and stuff on the second layer that doesn't impact the first layer, at some point, then that still grows the security where even if Bitcoin miners can't make as much on Bitcoin fees, they can still mine Bitcoin and make them in RSK fees. And then that kind of works out. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like Rootstock's getting that much traction or transaction fees or anything right now. So it's a good theory, but you know, whatever. There might be a way people figure out to involve the Lightning Network because Lightning Network causes big pools of capital to form where people have a bunch of money in channels, in hubs, kind of running this stuff. It would be nice to find a way to involve that capital, that investment in the Lightning Network in layer one security. I don't know exactly how that would work. In like a system like Dash or Decred, you have masternodes or stakers who provide security for the mining network, but that would probably be tricky and cause substantial changes to do it with Lightning. But 
at least that way, if the layer one just doesn't scale at all, all the money and stuff involved in layer two, in this case, the Lightning Network, but it could be a different layer two, again, just like the rootstock example, um, could contribute to the security of the first layer. And then we don't have a problem anymore there. But of course, if the second layer gets too big, where it's like 90% of the security is coming from the second layer, 90% of all the activity, all the money, then at that point, why do you need a layer one? The entire point of building on that is the security and decentralization, et cetera, guarantees. But if all of that is super dependent on this layer two, at some point you can just get rid of the layer one and just run it like that. So something to think about. It's important to note that we are a few years away from having to deal with Bitcoin security ticking time bomb actually going off. But I think it's really important to start thinking about this today, bring out the discussion, start proposing some solutions and kind of get moving on it. What do you guys think? What's your favorite potential solution to Bitcoin's ticking time bomb of a lack of a security budget? What would you do? Let me know in the comments, ping me on Twitter, wherever. Just let me know and let's keep this going. All right, guys, bye-bye.